Hey everybody, this is Yuri from Sure, and I'm out in the field today in St. Louis, and I'm here with my good friend Ben Mazak. Ben is a broadcast mixer. Can you tell us a little bit about your work? Yeah, sure. Uh, I work for multiple TV networks, namely ESPN, NBC, and Fox, uh, mixing live sports for television. That's my job. That's awesome. And uh, today we're going to talk about sports. Yeah. Because everyone loves sports. And specifically, uh, I want to talk a little bit about hockey. Sure. I sure. don't really know much about hockey. I don't do broadcast and I don't do uh, sports much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a sportser. And uh, so let's talk about how do you even do a broadcast for hockey? Like, sure. Let's, yeah. go, let's go start to finish. Let's talk microphones. Like, yep. How do you get a, how do you get the sounds of a hockey game? Yeah, so uh, the main sound of what you hear of almost any hockey broadcast in the world uh, comes from ten boundary mics that we place around the glass of the arena. Right, there's specific positions. The league actually mandates it. Okay. The NHL and in the NHL's case, they mandate where we can put the mics. Mm -hmm. So we have the ten count would be there's one behind each goal on the, on the glass, so pretty up high. Then there's one near and far at each red line mm -hmm. so that's one two three four five six and then the last four are near and far of the blue lines okay cool. so and they're taped either taped or they make custom clips for these mics that go at the top of the glass nice so why boundary mics the boundary mics we've found and i think people engineers and mixers over over the years it's been this way for a very long time i think mm -hmm. we found that it's just the best way to pick up not only the close proximity sound of someone getting hit on the glass, but also it really helps to pick up the nuanced sounds of like the skates on the ice, mm -hmm. the puck, and, and they also can take, in most cases, can take a pretty high SPL level, right? Got and it. hockey is loud. The stadiums are loud. The the puck is loud when it hits a, a stick. Mm -hmm. The hits are really loud on the on the glass. So it, there's a number of factors that of why we use them, but those are probably the two. The just the way that they pick up sound and the the amount of SPL they can take is really important. Fantastic. So if anyone doesn't know what a boundary mic is, we've got one here, the Sure Beta 91A, which is a boundary mic of sorts, and. Uh, so that's really cool. So are there other mics that are involved in this besides the boundary mics around yeah, the ring? Yeah, so specifically I'll speak from personal what I'm doing. I work for ESPN for their NHL show. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do on our package, we aside from the normal 10 microphones on the glass, um, we do our show in surround sound. Uh, and we've developed over the last couple of seasons, our, our lead engineer, audio designer, has developed a way where we're basically taking, we take three lavalier mics, uh, they're wireless, we put them in each goal. So we have a left and a right near the front of the goal. Okay. And at the back of the goal, we put the third mic on the center back post and facing out to the rear. Okay. And then using uh, what's called a mono to stereo synthesizer, we make that a, f a false stereo and we pan that to the left the left and right rear speakers of your your at home surround mix. So Amazing. what you're hearing is a four it's 4.0 or a 5.1 goal for each side of the ice. So that's Amazing. that's part of it. Right, uh, and then the last thing that rounds that out is, we typically on our biggest broadcast we typically have um, four robotic cameras, mm -hmm. left, right, behind each goal, up t way up high, okay, and then near and far at the center point of the ice, which is one place the PCCs can't or the boundary mics can't cover, mm -hmm. uh, and so we put and, and on those we put shotgun mics, and so that would that rounds out that that's our sound that's the. It, it, Personally, I'm biased. Obviously, I feel like we get a very big ice sound, and that's how we do it. The combination of the boundary mics, the shotgun mics, and the lobs in the goal um, wow. combine to make this big, you know, 5.1 sort of sound on top of the fact that we have multiple crowd mics. We put out um, upwards of six sets, six stereo sets of crowd mics around the arena. High, low. That's amazing. Um, yeah, everywhere. That's amazing. So, so uh, one question that I have. So hockey rinks are very, this might go into mixing now a little sure, bit, yeah. but hockey rinks tend to be pretty loud and pretty reverberant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So how do you handle the amount of bouncing around the space that you get? Uh, uh, it's a lot of compression, very, okay. very controlled compression though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not trying, I'm not trying to clamp down too hard, but okay. um, the typically most of the mixers we use uh, have auto mixing capabilities. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times for me personally, I will use, let's say I'll take a feed of the, the PA from the stadium and I'll use that to trigger the auto mixer to duck my crowds. 
so that when the PA, you won't hear the PA on my broadcast, but when the PA gets really loud inside the building, it pulls my crowds down a little bit so okay. I can just focus on the ice mics. And the crowd the crowd mics tend to be where most of the noise, the PA noise comes from. Okay. That helps. It's, it's actually surprising in most stadiums how isolated the ice mics really are from the PA and the crowd. You do pick up crowd in them. You're talking about the boundary mics, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the boundary mics that are on top of the glass. It's, it's fascinating how isolated that sound okay. can be. Um, and keeping the ice kind of locked in, I guess. Got you know, it. Got and it. separate from the crowd. So the idea is, you know, we, we have we typically put our crowd mics in a group mm-hmm. and our and our ice mics in a group so that we can control how loud the crowd mics are versus how how loud our in your face ice sound is. And that's the really the way to manage the noise in the arena. Amazing. Okay, so one last question about that. Somebody scores a goal, mm-hmm. sirens start going off. Yeah. How do you manage that with all the mics that are on the ring <laughs> honestly you you live with it okay uh, it's in in 90 percent of the arenas that we're in you're going to redline most of your mics mm-hmm. um, i just make sure personally i make sure that the crowd mics aren't going to clip okay when the horn sounds so that effectively goal goes in i pull my ice mics all out because they're going to all be full red at that point amazing uh and i let my crowd mics breathe and do the talking essentially you know that plus whatever bleed you're going to get in your announcer's microphones really Mm -hmm. help it still feels pretty big um as long as like i said you you know i'm not crushing everything with with compression so got it that's amazing so i did not realize there were that many mics just out yeah on the rink at any given time yeah and then if you combine that with the fact that we also usually have upwards of 10 to 15 cameras that have shotgun mics on them. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you know, I can fill up a 64 fader console pretty fast. Amazing. Um, we had a student, so we're at, we're at a college here in St. Louis, and uh, we had a student that knew I was going to be talking to you. They had a question. Do, does anybody use parabolic microphones in hockey? No. Uh, we don't in hockey, but in pretty much and most other sports we do. So baseball, mm-hmm. we use them, but in a stationary manner for the most part. Okay. Uh, in baseball, that would be like the what we call the bat crack microphones behind home plate are typically parabolic mics. Really? Okay. Yeah. And on the biggest broadcast, we might also have an operator in the outfield stands with mm-hmm. a parabolic microphone. Amazing. Um, and then in football, that's the majority of what you hear in the NFL is parabolic microphones. Got it. So it's just a matter of covering distance, and you probably just don't need to cover that kind of right. distance in a hockey rink? Right. Yeah, you don't. You're pretty close. Mm-hmm. The boundary mics get you right on the ice. Right. Whereas in the NFL, mm-hmm. you're 10, 20, 50 yards away from the play. you got to have something directional that can cover that ground for you. Got it. Yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to say about microphones? Anything fascinating that <sighs> I'm, you've come I mean, across in your career? Only, only that the thing that I find works best for crowds are omnidirectional dynamics. Really? Yeah. They are the because a lot of broadcasts, uh, a lot of mixers, including myself when I was starting out, tend mm-hmm. to use shotguns okay. for crowds because they're in the truck. They're easy to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, but recently this year I've been mixing some soccer. And one of the trucks I was on, we ran out of shotgun microphones. Mm-hmm. And I need those to cover the field. Okay. So I said, okay, <laughs> what's available? I mean, it's happy accident, right? Right, right? But the one thing I've discovered in the past year or so is that they happen to have some omnidirectional dynamic mics on the truck. Mm-hmm. Pull them off, put them up for crowd mics, and it was the most smooth, like, open crowd sound I'd ever heard. Yeah, and so I think they're from, dynamic. Exactly. You don't have to deal with any kind of clipping. Yeah, and, and you don't have to, and you know, the a thing we worry, we worry about a lot in stadiums is cable runs. Mm-hmm. So you, the voltage drop can be quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So a condenser doesn't always work, or a shotgun that requires 48 volts doesn't always work. Dynamics don't need it. It's a beautiful marriage. So I think I'm going to stick with that for a very long time now. All right. Well, Ben, thank you yeah. so much for joining me no today. Problem. This Thanks is, for having me, man. This has been I awesome. Learning a lot about sports today. This is just fantastic. I love talking about it.